Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm in my Defender 90 TD5 and I'm going to be talking to you about what it's been like since I've had this car stage 2 remount. I'm going to be talking about the changes I've noticed to the top speed, the acceleration, where the smoke comes out of the exhaust when you accelerate and just generally living with this car after it was stage 2 remapped over at a live tuning. So the fuel consumption and just driving about town generally. So if you're interested in any of that, stay tuned for this video. <music> As a Defender will know they're not the quickest car in the world and standard they put out 122-ish brake horsepower. Mine now puts out 192 brake horsepower as tested on the dyno over at a live tune where I got the car remapped. So a massive difference and I really noticed that day to day in all aspects of driving the car. What does getting a remap involve? Well you can either get a stage one remap and in that case all that happens is the car's plugged in and the ECU chip is updated to take on the new remap and what that does is puts your car to about 160 brake horsepower so a really good increase for such a simple modification. I had a dyno done of my car before and after so I could see the difference the remap made and I think that's quite nice to do if you are thinking of getting a remap because you can just see what your car was putting out standardly. Now Defenders do differ, so the TD5 engines, apparently some of them just weren't as good as others. So some of the engines put out a little bit less than 120 and some the full 122 or whatever the quoted number was. And um, Mine was actually a good engine when I got it remapped, so that made me feel better that the last 14 years of its life it's been looked after quite well. A stage 2 remap is a little bit different because yes, you plug it in and get it uh, chipped the same way, but you must have a performance intercooler. And you can't quite see mine behind there, but it's behind the radiator. And uh, I fit in a live performance intercooler. I fitted the intercooler before I went down to a live tuning. I already noticed a difference, to be honest, as soon as I fitted that. Um, just the, air, the engine could breathe that bit more and it made a difference just straight off as soon as I fitted it. I would show you the intercooler, but I don't want to dig down and open everything up again. But you can see, like I say, on the previous videos of where that is. So let's go for a drive and let's check out some of the performance differences over this car and also about fuel consumption. We'll do a video of the exhaust just so you can see, is there any black smoke? Because I actually don't know when I do put my foot down whether we do get black smoke coming out of the exhaust. So let's go for a drive and check all that out. So let's just see whether we get any exhaust smoke out under full acceleration. And also let's hear the exhaust note as well, because that's one of the things when people are thinking of getting a remap, is it gonna make a difference to the sound of your Defender? So let's do a test. I've got a GoPro on the back, so I'm gonna go for a run now and let's see what a difference um, that makes. You also get an idea of how quick this thing is now. So let's go. So inside, it doesn't sound that much different. I mean, it is way quicker. And I can't see any smoke when I look in my rear view. It feels a bit dangerous to be honest how quick it accelerates at the moment for a Defender. Just because the handling's still still quite bad on this car. Um, I haven't done anything with the springs or anything. It's got what, what they were when I bought them. If you drop a gear and put your foot down, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it really picks up um, quite well to be fair. that was up to 70 miles per hour which to be fair was pretty unheard of in my uh, car before I got it remapped. I don't know if you guys watching have got a Defender or driven a Defender but generally particularly with the TD5s and the gearing and um, you get to about 50, 60 at a push and it feels like you're really pushing the engine and it's a bit of a strain. Um, now I can accelerate up to 70 no problem at all. I wouldn't say it feels really comfortable at 70 but it will do it and so on the motorway if you're overtaking those sorts of things it makes a big difference the biggest thing with the remap for me is just the way it handles at lower speed so the way it picks up and um, in traffic just keeping up on roundabouts and things like that it makes a huge difference for it also makes it a lot of fun to drive whereas before i loved the way the defender looked and you know all those things but driving it was always to be honest, it felt like hard work, whereas now I actually really enjoy driving um, this car because it is just so much more perky and uh, and it just is a lot of fun to drive uh, with this, with the remap. So I had my remap done at a live tuning uh, in Lincoln. After looking at loads of places, they seem to be the best guys for it, in my opinion. Um, 
really happy with uh, with those guys. They did an amazing job right through from my first contact to them to buying the parts, fitting them at home myself, and the advice I got over the phone when I was trying to fit those parts. Um, I couldn't I couldn't ask for any better to be honest. And then also when I went down as well, the whole experience of getting the remount was um, it was really good. It was a really good day, really fun day. Uh, it taught me through everything. I was able to see what was going on and. Um, Got amazing results to get a hundred and just under 200 brake horsepower for this car with just the intercooler is quite good for a defender and um, they do also do uh, turbos a smaller one and a brand new bigger one they've launched which i've seen figures for 250 which is pretty insane for a defender um, and i have thought about that and maybe at some point that will be where we'll go just to get a little bit more um, out of this car because it does become quite addictive um, doing stuff to to my defender even though a lot of people would say look it's um it's a farm work vehicle why the hell would you want to make it quicker and the other thing i said i'd cover in this video was fuel consumption because i know a lot of people worry about that when they're thinking again they can't remap now um for me i haven't noticed a huge difference this road's quite bumpy hence why it's shaking so much but anyway, whenever remap they think it's going to drink fuel and be really different to what they um they have currently now for what I do, the driving that I do, which is, um, this is my second car, I sort of go out in it occasionally, it's not something I use every day, I haven't noticed any difference at all. Um, it does, if you're going at like 70 miles per hour for extended periods of time, so on motorway driving, you do notice the fuel get, go down quite quickly. However, for me, that's um, not something I do, but also I wasn't able to drive at 70 miles per hour for a consistent amount of time before because uh, the car just couldn't do it, didn't feel like it could do it. Uh, so I don't know if there's any difference really in that. I wouldn't say it's um, something that has changed drastically. And so if you were thinking of getting your car remapped, unless you're using it every day and you're commuting in your TD5, I don't really think it's a problem at all. I don't think it really changes the fuel consumption much at all. So my favorite part about the remap, which I said I would talk about in this video, is acceleration. Now that is the biggest, most fun change that I've noticed this car. So for example, if we're sitting here and we're in third gear, let's get around these corners a bit. If you drop into second and put your foot down, that short acceleration is so good. That has been the biggest change that I've noticed. That's what makes it so much better when you're driving in town on roundabouts, that sort of thing. Just to pull away from traffic, that's been the biggest difference for my remap and that's the reason I love it so much. The final thing is top speed. Now, as I mentioned in, this, in the fuel consumption bit, you can get up to 70 miles per hour quite easily in this car now. So if I'm going down at 40, 50, just touching 60, I've got to slow down now. But you can easily get up to 70 miles per hour in the car, it's, it's not really a problem. I have had this car on a private road up to about 90 miles per hour which does feel extremely fast in a Defender. And uh, that was just a one-off, just to kind of push the car and see how it would go. So it definitely has added a lot of boost to this car. It really does uh, get going much better than it did before. Not that you'd ever want to drive these cars fast, but it's good to know that you can get up to 70 miles per hour should you need to. And it doesn't feel like you're really pushing the engine like it did before. So overall for me, having this car remap was something I thought about for a long, long time. Um, I did think about just going for a stage one remap, if I'm honest with you, um, because I didn't want to get a performance intercooler and all the parts that came with it. But as I was doing other things to my car, if those that follow the channel will know, I managed to destroy my radiator by accident. And uh, as a result, when I took that out, I thought, why not just take the radiator intercooler out completely and just replace the lot, which is what I ended up doing. And when I was putting the old intercooler back, it looked so tired, I thought, let's just get a performance intercooler at that point. Hence why I ended up going for a stage two remap in the end. Uh, but, it, but it's been the best thing I've done for my car. I've done a lot of cosmetic modifications to my car, um, but having the performance has just made this car actually enjoyable to drive a lot more than it was before. Um, I haven't tried it off-road or anything like that with the remap, for those that are probably going to ask that question. But for on-road driving, it's just made it way more livable with. So I would say if you're thinking about getting a remap, um, I would definitely recommend it. I would recommend a live tuning. They have been brilliant um, from start to finish with everything that I've done with them so far. Let me know in the comments below what you think if you've had your car remap. Is anything I've said wrong? Uh, do you agree with what I've said or disagree? Check out my channel, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.